think differentiated them from uh, passing MySpace? What, what do you think the key factors were for them to explode and take off? And that yeah. happens with lots of companies. That's AOL, a very important passed, question. AOL passed, CompuServe, you know, they, it just does. It just happens. You know, Google passed Yahoo and Search. Yeah. What was yeah. the, to, to you, what was the differentiating factor? Well, Besides, I, of course. You know, I think there's a lot of factors, but the two primary ones, well, sort of there's three primary ones, two of them being closely related. One is it was based on genuine identity, and it was authenticated by a email address that could be, you know, ir you know, unquestionably linked to your name. Mm -hmm. So you had to use your real name, and you could be authenticated by your university email address. It began that way, and that culture of authenticity and genuine identity has more or less carried through to the present. And even though it can be gamed, this is the way Facebook is generally used. And that was never the way any other social network that came before it was primarily used. Even though Friendster attempted to enforce that kind of thing, they had no real ability to do so. Uh, MySpace never even thought of it. You know, MySpace was a world of role playing and, and, and anonymity and, and, and you know, pickups uh, mm -hmm. and, and whatever. It was fun, but it wasn't, it, it actually, as a result, didn't have the can't set of capabilities that Facebook almost inadvertently gave itself, or Mark gave it, by making it Auth based on authentic I I, uh, identity. So um, that's one. I think another really big one was the overall technical approach. First of all, it was a technical approach. Mm -hmm. And really, there was no social network except for, ironically, Orkut and Club Nexus that were really produced by techno uh, and that anyone that had any real significance that were produced by people with serious technical chops, you know, and not that Mark's the world's greatest programmer, but, you know, MySpace and Friendster and, and uh, you know, I think of others were, were created by people who were more or less party people, mm -hmm. you know, they did it for the social side, right, and Facebook was, was created by somebody who had a fairly good set of social, you know, instincts, but was a, a geek, a, a computer scientist, mm -hmm. and even if a young one. And, and the attitude that that con brought to the company was one of, first of all, simplicity. I think, well, that, that's another thing. He also had a sort of personal, you know, sort of uh, aesthetic preference for minimalism. And that served to be very beneficial. And I think this is sort of an interesting similarity with Google, that Facebook was extremely simple from the start, both in look and even in functionality. Mm -hmm. And the functionality grew relatively slowly. Um, but it also, because it was started by a computer scientist who was acutely aware of what's happened on the Internet, um, he knew it could not ever sit still. It had to continually push forward technically. And, and he's, he's done that consistently from day one. He's added features, changed it, mutated it, improved it, stepped forward, stepped back, altered. You know, that was never the, the approach that MySpace or Friendster had, for example.